Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily chat. Um, so I'm realizing my screen looks a bit. All right. Um, <laughs> let's try it this way. Excuse me for doing my pre production stuff during the production. Um, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 663. And the topic today is more about women leading. And the time is now. Now I'll get into that in a second. Before I do the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and where, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby, and this is going to change, I think, because I just had a very powerful conversation today with a friend of mine who's a great coach. So bear with me. So I'm a, I'm a best-selling author, an inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also very clear about helping women be in leadership. That's what's coming through more and more, which is why I'm doing this talk today, the way I'm doing it. Hi, Adriana, nice to see you. Oh, and quick PS, this is a Facebook Live that I first that we'll go on to youtube later on in case you're watching there facebook live first and if you want to interact join me at 5 p.m pacific time on my personal page where i'm doing this broadcast right now i'll give you the links at the back end so the topic today and by the way we're, let me finish my intro spiel um i'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine which inspires my work inspires my calling and inspires these talks called messages from the masculine inspiring your feminine heart and today we're at episode number 663 yes lots of these and I've noticed my message has been shifting a while. In fact, I did a talk on th uh, for Saturday, I think, about women in leadership. This is more about that, so that's why this is a more title. So more about women in leadership, and the time is now. So thanks for joining with me. Hi, Dylan. Nice saving broadcast. I love seeing all these women in my talks because this is for you, although I like seeing men in here too because hopefully they'll go, oh, this makes sense because that's kind of my mission as well. So, by the way, if you want to share this out with any men that you know, this might come in handy, but watch first, then share it out, because it might not necessarily match them. Then again, it might inspire them. It might piss them off, because there are some men I know who don't like my talks. More shame on them, um, because I know the future. Yes, I know the future, and the future is female. Let me be clear about that. Um, and if you've seen my broadcast, if you know who I am, I'm very passionate about supporting women. I love women dearly um, as as a culture, not just because romantically, because I've been single for a long time. But I talk about women a lot, a lot in my work because I see the change that's coming. And I'm not necessarily saying I'm the only one seeing this, but I'm definitely one talking about it in my world. Uh, maybe you should know other men talking about this. Certainly there are other women talking about this, thankfully. And this is a wake up call in some ways. It's a, an awakening call as well. And also a reminder to women in particular, but for men who are watching, because bottom line is the world needs to change. And part of that change has to be a cultural shift. And I talked about this on, again, I did a talk about this on Saturday, I believe, called, um, I forgot what it's called actually, but it was about women leading. I, 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 no, so I think the title was something along the lines of, um, my message was about, I'm changing the world and it's putting women in charge, something like that, kind of, sort of. So today's in a similar vein, but not quite as blatant, perhaps, maybe more detail oriented. So let's see what happens. Because again, if you've ever seen my broadcast before, these talks are never scripted. So first of all, okay, I'm just sorry, I, did, I had three things for vying for my attention in the first of all piece. I'm like going, which one do I want to talk about first? <sighs> it's always getting interesting when I get to this point because sometimes I have this like fork in the road of going, I'll go this way, I'll go this way. Okay, let's see where I want to go. Let's go this way because <laughs> I had the split going on which direction to go in. Um, I'm becoming very aware of how many women are stepping into leadership. Just watching on television and in the interview shows how many women are stepping up into the Democratic nomination for the 2020 um, election is a reminder or a nudge or a, um, what's we're looking for? An indicator of what's coming. And whether or not a woman gets into the office, the White House this time around is actually secondary. Because what I'm really talking about is not so much about who's up the top in charge. What I'm talking about is leadership everywhere. And for me, what I'm aware of is how much our culture is waking up. And it's been a very short span. You know, it was only 100 years ago that women got the right to vote. So it's not been that long in our culture, in the culture on the, West, the Western world. But what I'm very aware of how much is changing in terms of women are shifting. And it started, okay, little history lesson, bear with me. Yes, 100 years ago, women got the right to vote, so in 19, uh, 1919. In 1960-something, exactly the years it, it fluctuates, was when the sexual revolution happened. And 
and women, and I've talked about this before, about the evolution of women over the ages, but really the 60s is when women finally got, um, I'm, not sure, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what the word is, emancipated, but certainly awakened to an understanding of who they were. And what happened was, because the world was structured the way it was, and I'm going to break that down again, we've been in a patriarchal society for many years. And in the 60s, when women had the women's liberation movement, the sexual revolution, the women's lib, uh, women's lib um, what was the other one? The feminist movement arose up, kind of all those same things. It was a time when women basically said, we need to take charge and live our lives and be free, kind of, sort of. And what happened, though, was women were expressing within a, I'm going to say it like this, were expressing in a bubble, which basically was a contained environment within the masculine, sorry, the patriarchal structure that we had at the time, which you still have. So women said, okay, we're going to be like the men and compete like the men and act like the men. So they dressed up as so. In the 60s, if you, if you remember the far back, if you watched your history books, because some people weren't alive back then, women basically burned their bras, cut their hair, took off their makeup, wore suits, and went to work like the men. And for a lot of women who weren't going to be the secretaries in the office who were being chased after by the men, which was the very 50s, if you ever saw uh, Mad Men, that talks about that a lot. But what women started doing was to fit into the business world like men. And they copied the men. And for, and for the 30, 40 years since then, that's still going on. In a corporate structure, a lot of women have had to act like men. And it may not be so strict, structured and rigid where women were wearing suits like pants suits like men were doing, but women still have a lot of energetic, they're very masculine and very male energetic-like, which is competitive, combative, winning at all costs. That's kind of the structure of the business world. Now, we are shifting... Um, culturally, not business-like yet, but we're shifting culturally, where women are starting to re become aware, thankfully, and waking up to things beyond the copy of the men mindset. There is, there was, sorry, there was, well, there is still, there was an evolution that happened around 15 years ago, 20 years ago, which was when the goddess movement started showing up. I have my own perspe perspective on that, I may share that here, but the goddess movement was a great place for women to get a clue and a hint a nudge and inspiration there's more to life than being like the men and the goddess movement for a lot of women was a um hearkening back to a deeper place inside it was really where the women started to discover their own feminine hearts and in some ways it worked really well to help women to learn to take time out from the business world so they could soften and be more relaxed and be more in the flow and be more um in the dance of life however it was in fact in 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 fact it's a half step and i'll get to that in a moment so Robin, you sorry, posted, yes. You have to know when to be in your masculine and when to be in your divine feminine. Exactly. The thing is, though, by the way, just that masculine piece for a second, the business world I talked about, the patriarchal society, wasn't masculine. It was macho. And I distinctly mean the difference between macho and masculine because macho is egocentric. Masculine is purpose-centric in the simplistic way I put it in this context. So yes, for the truth, and this is the thing, when women are out in the world getting things done, that's a very masculine energy to push things forward, to make things happen, to create and to do things in the world. The feminine energy is more receptive to receive divine inspiration, to be in a collaborative environment. And frankly, our culture is um, desperately hungry for that energetic. Women especially have the gift of the feminine, because men bring the feminine too in different ways, same as women have masculine and feminine, as you just mentioned, Robin, which is true. There is a distinct um, missing element in our world, to be honest. Oh, you're welcome, Robin. I'm glad you like this. So, so you, you like the definition of, or distinction of the masculine and feminine, masculine and macho. Yes, it's one of my things to talk about. That's why I don't like the word toxic masculinity. I believe they call it toxic machoism. Again, because the macho is ego-based, masculine is not. It's, it's purpose-driven or purpose-based. Which, is, again, I'm breaking that into very simplistic like one-liners because there's a lot more to both of those structures, but I'm going to give you those two as well. Getting back on track. So the feminine energetic, which is an energy of collaboration and cooperation, which sounds so wonderful, is so um, missing from our culture. We've built this world, this society, this, this is particularly the Western world, and a very competitive energetic that's always about beating the other person out, either with the lowest price or the biggest win or the most machismo, whatever that was. And women were just um, complicit in that because they acted like the men in the same place. Men and women in that place were both guilty of that path. Not saying it's the end of the world, but certainly not the most functional. Now, where we need to go as a culture, as a world, 
to basically save our planet, as I talked about it before, is we need to look at how do we take care of the planet. And I'm not going to be an environmentalist here. However, I am going to say the energy we bring to saving the planet, as in the place we live, is to bring a feminine energetic to that, which is a way of cooperation and collaboration, because it's one about cooperating and collaborating with each other to work together for the greater good. It's also about cooperating and collaborating with our environment and the way we live in the world so we can make better choices. Because what's been happening is we as a culture, using one example being the fossil fuel industry, have been a very macho way of just punishing to get what they wanted, extracting the necessary fuel, fossil fuels to drive, the, drive the, the machines of technology and the machines of industry. Well, the reality is that where we're going, that cannot sustain anymore. That's been proven so many times. Fossil fuels and fossil fuel mindset is a very finite, limited resource. And I'm speaking very you know, world terms right now because I'm talking about women saving the world. Yes, saving the world. And I mean this from the place of the point of view of the feminine, because again, the feminine is a primary focus for women that some men carry as well, but it's a feminine mindset that we can all embody, which is a, a sense of how we can collaborate um, and cooperate. I keep using those terms because it's about we come together rather than being separating and being individual. The competitive one against the other, dualistic society that we've been living in is a society that will not sustain because part of it has to die for that to happen. But the truth is what's happening now is we're getting to a point and someone's commenting recently about how much darkness has been showing up in the world. One viewpoint of that is that as more and more of us wake up and become conscious and be caring and, and wanting to make a difference, the more light that becomes aware on the planet, the more darkness gets concentrated because there's less of it there. And this is a philosophical, more existential perspective, by the way. So what's been happening is the darkness gets concentrated like um, <laughs> like spiritual zits <laughs> to use a really bad analogy so the explosions and I'm sorry give me bad images now but the explosions of, of warfare the explosions of decimation the explosions of um, of um, terrorism even are those smaller concentrated places of darkness that are being concentrated because the light surrounds them so as, made, as much as it sounds like there's so much trauma and death and, and bad things happening, it's in smaller, smaller spots. And what's happening is we're changing the culture. That's already happening. But at the same time, just changing the culture from dark to light is a good step. But again, without the feminine in leadership, without women leading, without women being the guides for this, it won't last. Because the thing is, if the, if the macho, if the, ma if the male mindset drives it forward after this, it will devolve back into dualistic. It will devolve back into competitive. It will devolve back into losing. So this part of my manifesto, because <laughs> it's the second or third talk I've done on the same theme, is really about how do we raise the conversation? How do we bring a high level of conversation to the table? And this is kind of where I'm going in my work. I think that's one is I changed my introduction on my broadcast is how do we bring about a much more conscious, informative, understanding and cooperative conversation about where we're going in the future. Part of the work I'm moving into, it feels like more and more, is not as somebody posted, like men can't do women's empowerment, I would never dare do that. But to inspire and support women in leadership, absolutely I can do that. So I'm maybe moving into more of a service role in a way to be a sports women looking to lead because I know that's where things need to go and I won't be the leader for that because that's not my role because I'm a guy <laughs> to be clear so this message is putting put out there to suggest to those watching and to those people you want to share this with that it's time we shift the um, direction we're going in and in fact putting women giving women the steering wheel so to speak of our culture and our society whether it's going to be politically I don't know and again as I mentioned it may not be about putting a woman in the White House. That may not be the key because we've got a woman as prime minister in England and that ain't working out so well. But however, the different, uh, let me, all right, let me, let me sidebar on that for a second. Being from England, I can speak to this. In some ways, Theresa May is a reincarnation of Maggie Thatcher energetically because both of those women, I mean, Maggie Thatcher was called the Iron Maiden. Both women are very much in the masculine, which is say in their, in their male energy because they are doing the same thing that the men are doing. It's not the inclusive cooperative society. It's getting it done, pounding it out, making it happen. And that isn't working as has been proven by the, the challenges of Brexit. I'll keep it like that. 
In fact, what I just read today is that the British the, the government has taken away from Theresa May the power of that. They're actually going to try and re redo it themselves. It ain't working out right now. Anyway, back to this country. So I don't believe putting a woman in the White House may be the only, well, it, it, it would be great if it happens, but it's not the be all and end all. The reality is, I believe firmly, is that when we have a change of leadership throughout the country, at all levels, where women start to lead and take charge is where we definitely have a shift coming. Because frankly, and this is my, my <laughs> oracle reading, is if we don't do that, we're gonna destroy ourselves. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, doomsday, I know. But I want to make this point clear. Because ultimately, if we don't do something different in 50, 60 years, we're in trouble. So as a encouragement and an invitation is how can we, men and women, collaborate and cooperate so that women get to lead more. Authentically from the feminine, not to be like the men, not to do things the same as the men are doing, but how you do it as women. Really owning your feminine mindset, heart, and direction. So ladies, this is my invitation to you to step out in that way, to speak forward. And if you want support, that's what I'm here for. And again, if you want to share this out with other women, other men, feel free to do so because it might be a clarion call for some people and it might be a, oh shit, panic for other people. <laughs> so um, I think that's my message for today. I, I did say it's shifting. That's why I'm shifting some things too. So bear with me as I evolve into my next um, clarity of expression. I had a really powerful transformational experience with a friend of mine today who gave me some great input and has got me really processing through some new levels of my own work. So this message is on point where I'm going, I believe. So um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below uh, in the broadcast. I thank you for watching and uh, hopefully this has been of insight and support to you. I appreciate the feedback. Robin, by the way, thank you for your comments. And um, I think that's about it. So replace, you know where they are and then remind it tomorrow. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. I also put them onto my business page on Facebook and then onto YouTube. So you can find me on Facebook and facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. You can also watch my um, um, replays, that's the word, on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. It's a few other places too. On YouTube, you can watch my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these broadcasts live. And it's actually easier to find it there than it is to find it on my personal page. So that's where you can find me. Again, 5 p.m. Pacific time every day where I'm going to be online here. If you want to watch me live and interact. And if you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off, whichever platform you're watching on. And if you want to share it out, please do. So with that, I thank you for watching. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.